Hey, this is Florian, Online Tennis Instruction. Today we want to talk about the inside-out forehand. If you've watched tennis on TV lately, you've seen that players are constantly running around their backhands in order to hit forehands from the ad court. They're trying to dominate with their forehand from the ad court, and that begins with inside-out forehands, but then you can, of course, also hit inside-in forehands. Why do players constantly run around their backhands? it is because they can generate more racket head speed on the forehand side. So even somebody like Novak Djokovic, who has a phenomenal backhand, uh, prefers to run around that backhand and hit a forehand if he has time to really set up for that forehand. And you should also be running around your backhand in order to hit big forehands. You, of course, need to have a good forehand to do that. If you don't have a good forehand, then first you need to work on your forehand. Now today I want to share a video with you which is actually a preview video from our OTI Plus monthly coaching program in which we uh, cover different topics every month and this month we were covering the inside out and inside in forehands. So in this video I discuss the three types of shots that you can hit once you run around your backhand and once you're set up in the ad court to dominate with your forehand. So check that out right now. So when we are set up in this position here to hit inside out and inside in forehands from the backhand corner, we essentially have three options with our forehand shot. We can either hit uh, inside out deep, not so close to the sideline. This is our uh, setup shot. This is kind of how we build the pattern, okay? Or then, uh, more advanced, we can try to hit with a bit of an angle to pull our opponent inside out again, to pull our opponent wide. That's the second cone over there, way to the right. And then the last option is, of course, the inside-in forehand here to the open court. That's usually more of a finishing shot. But first, let's talk about uh, the setup shot, okay? The basic shot with which we build that pattern. So usually we run around our backhand, and then the first shot, the high percentage shot, is a shot that goes deep to the backhand corner, okay? And usually we don't hit that first one uh, that close to the single sideline. So it's not an angled shot yet. Now with this shot, we are trying to put pressure on the opponent's backhand, and then the ideal scenario, of course, maybe our opponent will miss, but usually our opponent, what we're trying to do is to set up this pattern and to get a, a weaker return so that uh, the backhand shots get weaker and weaker. Um, usually that's, uh, that will result in shorter shots, okay? Or just higher floating shots, and then we can put more and more pressure, and the, the better we're set up, um, then we start to think about going with the angle shot or with the inside-in shot. So this setup shot right here, we can hit it hard and flat, for example. We can also loop it a little bit, or we can hit a really heavy topspin shot. And this is actually an option that I would like you to consider as well. So really with some height on it, so something like this, a bit more aggressive even, because so many players at the club level absolutely hate dealing with high backhand shots, okay? So you experiment a little bit with the variations of this setup shot, but the target is over there, not too close to the sideline. Depth is important. You can hit it a bit flatter. You can hit it as a standard rally ball, or you can hit a really high looping shot. Really experiment with what works best against whatever particular opponent you're playing against. Let's look at the basic setup shot here inside out. This one has a bit of spin on it. It's really deep and depth is critical. And I'm not hitting that close to the sideline. Take a look right here. That's approximately where I had the cone. That's really the target for this shot to set up the pattern. So the goal is to get a weaker return, ideally a bit shorter, and then we can hit an inside-in forehand or an angled forehand to finish the point. If our opponent manages to get the ball deep, then usually we will go inside out again with the setup shot. We can use that shot several times trying to pin the opponent to the backhand corner. In this case, the ball lands short, as we can see right now, and I go inside in here because that side is relatively open. 
Now let me show you the higher heavy topspin setup shot. Take a look how high this ball goes over the net. And now it jumps up and uh, is very high here for Lena. It's above shoulder level. And think about what your opponents will be able to do with a ball from that position above shoulder level. That's a very difficult shot. We don't see this shot so much at the pro level because the opponents can hit that ball really well. But at the club level, I think this is a very effective shot from this situation and I would highly recommend you experiment with it. Now I can run around again and the court is open for this inside in forehand. Now let's talk about the angled inside out forehand. So this is the shot where we're trying to pull our opponent wide outside of the court. This shot becomes easier, of course, the further I am over in the backhand corner, because then it's easier to hit that angled shot. So it'll look something like this. Okay, that was very short, but generally we try to leave this ball short so that we can pull our op opponent outside of the court. It's a very important shot if you want to dominate from the ad court with your forehand. It's a more difficult shot, definitely. We need to give it some spin, we need to leave it shorter. Um, there is an exception, of course, when we have a high ball here and we can really kind of drive it flat and still um, pull our opponent wide uh, as we leave that ball short. Now, if you want to study this shot, just take a look at Roger Federer highlights, um, forehand highlights, maybe you can type that in on YouTube. Federer is absolutely phenomenal at this. This is one of his best shots. He'll be way over here and he will create incredible angles with that forehand. Now part of the reason he can do that is he has so much racket head speed and such great technique. So you need a really good forehand to hit this shot. Um, so master that basic, that setup shot first and then experiment with the angle shot and see, see if you can incorporate that into your game. It's not the easiest shot. Let's take a look at an example. So I'm running around my backhand here and as you can see I'm relatively close to the single sideline. The further I am out the easier it becomes to hit that angle. So I hit this shot with maybe a medium amount of topspin, not super flat, not super heavy spin. And as you can see it lands very close to the single sideline which we usually try to hit the ball to when we hit this angled shot. Also, I left it a little bit short so it doesn't bounce that deep because if we hit it too deep, we can't create that angle. So from here, the ball continues to bounce and Lena is in a very difficult situation now outside of the court and that's a sign that we created a nice angle. And from here, she can only hit a defensive shot and the court is wide open for me to hit into. So the last one is the inside in forehand. This is when we then go to the open court and I want you to think of this as the finishing shot. So we're, we're setting up the pattern, we're hitting uh, inside out, we're putting pressure on the opponent and generally speaking we start to go inside in uh, once we really are in a very offensive position and once we feel like we can finish the point with that inside in shot. Because there's a risk with this inside in shot. If I hit a forehand from here inside in and the shot is weak and my opponent gets to it, the entire court is open over here. So we have to be very aware of that and many players nowadays can generate a lot of racket head speed with the wrist uh, with a forehand on the run. So this can be dangerous. So you have to be aware of that. Now the inside in shot is definitely important though. At the pro level you'll see them vary this a lot more. Um, just because they have to, they can't become too predictable. But So they'll hit inside in quite early often uh, rather than hitting three inside out forehands first for example. At the club level generally I think uh, hitting maybe three inside out forehands first is often the better strategy because you have such weak backhands and uh, that just puts you in a better position, okay? So you can get away with that. At the pro level, backhands are so strong and they can hit that backhand down the line, which I think at the club level, very few players can hit a good backhand down the line. If you hit an inside out forehand with a racket head speed, for them to go down the line and to beat you there, it's just very, very unlikely. At the pro level, it's a different story. So they have to mix it up more, go inside in. For you, I think the inside in shot really is the finishing shot. Here's an example. I build the point with the basic setup shot 
and now I see the short ball is coming I step in you can see I'm now using a neutral stance which we use more often on the inside in because it's our finishing shot and here I do manage to finish the point the video you just saw is a sample video from our OTI Plus monthly coaching program. In OTI Plus we cover a different topic every month and we do cover all four areas of the game. So technique, strategy, fitness and footwork as well as the mental game. In the first month of OTI Plus, I reveal the two secret serve power moves that are responsible for the large majority of the power on your serve. These movements have everything to do with what you do with your arm and nothing to do with what you do with your legs. To find out more about OTI Plus, simply click the link inside this video right now.